Hello everyone and thanks for joining me on another episode of Ancient Mystery. Very exciting episode today. We're going to look at the links between Heliopolis and Rome. Heliopolis was the Vatican City of ancient Egypt. Its priests were so powerful they even controlled Egyptian kings in some periods of their past. Let's take a look at this. Hello everyone, me again. I just want to say thanks to everyone and, you know, for subscribing. And I just love making these videos. I love it. Today, different stuff, different stuff, always different stuff. Look, this is just amazing. And this blew me away when I discovered it. The priesthood of Heliopolis shifted to Rome. You heard that correctly. The priesthood of Heliopolis Giza, which is close by at Cairo shifted to Rome, and this priesthood has been basically in power since since the, the dawn of time, since the Dark Ages, since, and I mean ancient, ancient, ancient pre-flood Dark Ages, I mean the Nephilim period and before that, the, the giants who were flying around in spaceships, and I mean that seriously. There are only two Heliopolises, the, the one is close to Giza, and of course, close to Giza, we know that a, a uh, that, that there seems to be a, a Nephilim from pre-Egypt was buried behind the Sphinx, which is bizarre. And we have this Ava Heliopolis, which is now called Baalbek, another ancient name for it. And they seem to have had this ancient type of concrete or superior cutting technique. I personally think this is concrete because it's much easier to make it than to cut it and drag it. I'm not sure what's really going on there. And of course, the giant doorway suggests Nephilim. So we have the Nephilim at somewhere close to Heliopolis, in which is Giza, the huge coffin. And also we have this giant doorway here. And I reckon these are, you know, 50 to 100,000 years old. They're from the past civilization. People talk about the past civilization as being, say, you know, 5,000, 10,000. No, no, no. It, 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 it's way more than that. Way more than that way before that. And this was the Temple of Heliopolis. It was a wonder of the world, and it was known for these obelisks. And of course, Rome is full of those obelisks as well. And as for Giza, Giza is really interesting. No one... The archaeologists are never going to get it. They look at what's on the ground when it comes to Giza. They don't look at mythology. And this is a religious site. Before that, I'm not sure what it was, but it, it is a religious site in Egyptian times, and even pre-Egyptian times, because there's a triplicity of three pyramids. There's actually three times three pyramids. Three here, three here, and there's three next to the Great Pyramid. And so this is representative of three wise men, or Hermes Trismegistus, or the Stone Age Trinity. And I'm, I'm argued in my books that these are burials for gods. And of course, if there was a male trinity, there was a female trinity who was a consort. Hence, we have the, the Queen's Pyramids, or we have a, a male chamber. A female chamber, so the the gods can be together. And there we have it again. And you know, people, everything we know is wrong. People say Akhenaten was the first, the first of the monotheists. No, 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 this guy, this guy, Khufu, and he was he didn't like the Egyptian gods. He just had one god, and we don't know who that was. And this is the temple of Isis at Giza. Isis. The goddess Isis was worshipped at Giza, and it seems that Isis was the newer name for the Triple Trinity, the female aspect of the Triple Trinity. There was a male aspect and a female aspect. And in Rome, do you know Rome has 13 obelisks, and more than half of those are from Heliopolis. And I'm arguing Rome shifted, the, the priests shifted from Heliopolis to Rome. The cult shifted away from Egypt and basically conquered Rome. And we all know that Jesus had lots of women around him. You know, we know we know these things. And there, there were two Egypts. This is this is what complicates the history of Egypt. For much of their history, they were two different countries. This was the south, Upper Egypt. This was the north, Lower Egypt. And I'm going to compare what's going on. This. Uh, Cardinal, I, I believe he's from Chicago, um, appears to be wearing the crown of uh, Lower Egypt. 
and it, it just goes goes on and on. Uh, this is a, a historic pope, and he appears to be wearing something like the crown of Upper Egypt. Uh, again, this crown here appears to be a, a composite of the two crowns, a, a, an archbishop. Uh, again, this is, uh, a, again, a composite. It's sort of red on the inside, like this one, and, and it's sort of folded like that one, but it's also got the point and peak of the Upper Egypt crown. And, of course, these are not modern crowns. These are modern people, but these are not modern crowns. They're, it's the tradition that's carried on down the centuries. And Osiris was a... Uh, the green man from the south of Egypt, and he is wearing the crown of Upper Egypt, the south, the, the hill country, and so he was basically the dead king resurrecting. And the one in the north, he was called Buddha or Ptah. I've argued that this is Buddha, and Buddha is the other type of green man. And some people say in the comments, no, 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 Gautama Buddha born 300 BC, what are you talking No, 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 reincarnated. Buddha reincarnates. That's that's the, that's what the tradition is. So it's actually a, a very very old god, very ancient. And the three wise men, another trinity, who were present at Jesus's birth. And what they don't tell you is that in the Stone Age, the Trinity, they always had there were male and female aspects to all trinities. They would have had consorts, but the female, of course, as we know. Uh, has been taken out of the Bible, and that's what many authors say. Yet the female trinity was present at Jesus' death. And this is this pops up in so many old pictures of, from Europe, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I went to this church in Germany. And I'm going to have to make a video about this. This is from Zorst, the Church of St. Mary's. Look, in the Middle Ages, to, to say people who are religious, they say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. But in the Middle Ages, it was different. It was, thank you, Mary. You see, Jesus was sort of like a, a Balder type figure. He was stabbed by Longinus. He's the resurrection God. But Mary was the one they turned to. And here we have Mary being crowned the Queen of Heaven. And before it was Mary, it was actually Isis who was crowned the Queen of Heaven. Do you see this? these solar rays around her? She is a kind of solar god, goddess. In this church, this church retains so many pagan elements. It's just unbelievable. I have to show you a video of this church. It's crazy. And who is this Who is this figure? This is basically God uh, crowning her. It, it's so hard to see because he, he's not wearing a crown at all. So I, it's so weird, this church. And here we have Jesus' crucifixion. And you have to ask, who are these ladies? There are three ladies here. And I'm sorry, but they're not the three Marys because the three Marys are standing down here and they're looking down on the crucifixion. And this is Longinus stabbing Jesus. And basically, they, this is the triple Isis, the triple deity. And when I saw this, I thought, okay, that's Mary. Yeah, that's Mary. But you look, you look closely. It's a Roman statue from the second century. It's Isis. And Mary basically absorbed many of the qualities of Isis, who was a goddess worshipped all around Europe. And it turns out Isis was worshipped all over the Roman Empire. There's a statue. There was a statue of Isis in Athens under the name Naif. And according to Plutarch, it was written underneath, I am all that has been, shall be, and my robe has no mortal uncovered. In other words, the Virgin Queen, and that is very familiar. And this is Isis here, holding a snake, and the reason for that is Isis was under world tree at the center of the world, the center of creation. And so was the snake, the snake of Eden. This is where the world tree was. It was on a mountain. Uh, this is a different type of Isis with the, the water. You might have noticed in a previous picture uh, the, the water, the jug. And now this is an Egyptian version of that with the world tree. So Isis is at the center of the world. And we do know that uh, Giza, the geographical center of Egypt, they saw this as the center of the world. And again, that's Isis. Okay the mother of the baby god, and the triple aspect of the goddess at the center of the world with the world tree is exemplified in Germanic mythology as the Norns, the weavers of man's fate, in Greece as well, and this is in Rome. It looks like they've shifted all their, basically all 
the obelisks from Heliopolis to Rome, which is bizarre. Now, Heliopolis was the city of the sun. Children of the sun in, in, in the Americas were known as basically the ancient Viracocha, and they were the giants, and they ruled certain lands, and it looks like their lands became religious centers in later times for us. We are people who absorbed their their world. We, we've taken over their world. And what were they? They were, in a way, ancient aliens because they may have had very high technology, but they were homo sapiens. They were just a, a, a gigantic form of us. And I'm not making any of this up. This is all This is all in the Bible. This is ancient history, okay? This is all ancient history, and it's verified by by fossils that people, some people refuse to acknowledge exist, which is interesting. This is, I believe, from Pompeii, a fresco, and it's showing a temple of Isis. Isis cult, the Isis uh, goddess cult took over the Roman Empire, and it was in Rome. This is an Isis temple in Pompeii. I believe Mozart visited this, and he was inspired to create the magic flute after visiting that. This is a Temple of Isis at Philae. I believe it's been slightly ruined since these old photographs were taken. And it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. This was a cult which was all over the empire. And early Christianity is very mysterious because the early Christians were doomsdayers. They they were saying the world was about to end and the Romans hated them. On the other hand, the Romans loved this, this, this cult of the goddess. And this is from Heliopolis. They brought the sun cult. This is the sun... Do you know what obelisks are? According to Pliny, they are a solar ray descending to Earth. And so what this really is, the sun cult has been absorbed. It, it, it's a monotheism, so hence it fits perfectly into early Christianity. And the Isis cult blended with uh, with the, what Jesus was saying. Now, I've covered a lot of this in my book, so if you're interested, check it out. It's all about saying that Giza is a triple goddess, which is a Stone Age triple goddess. Also, there was a triple god there. That's what the king's tomb is, the queen's tomb inside the Giza pyramid, but they're not for the king and queen. They're for a king and queen goddess and god. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that. Cheers. It's really interesting when you look at all the different connections and you see how everything fits together. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. There's a lot more coming up. There's so much coming up. There's so much stuff.